we are watching every episode of Star Trek, the entire franchise, and we are currently in the middle of Star Trek, the animated series. Alex, we are now 11 episodes deep, exactly halfway. I'm enjoying it so far, although I will admit some episodes are more forgettable than others. I've already had a hard time remembering all of them so far, but uh, I'm enjoying it overall. Yeah, I think there's really good episodes and really safe episodes, but not really any bad episodes. But we still got 11 left, so... Yeah, I think there's basically two main questions I still have for this second half. One, is it possible to have a really bad episode with only a 22-minute animated show? Uh, and two, will there be anything that even comes close to the second episode um, yesteryear? So we'll, we'll see. But we're going to get started today with episode 12, and we're going to start right now. Okay. I'm not going to laugh. I'm not going to laugh. I saw people were already commenting that I'm laughing at the... <laughs> <laughs> then I'm laughing at the uh, the Enterprise in the intro. We have just entered the Delta Triangle, a vast, uninhabited sector of our galaxy in which a high number of mysterious fireworks in space. Oh, you actually can't have fireworks because there's no oxygen, so. <laughs> Shut up. Situation, Mr. Smart. Oh, standing up. Our sensors are in a state of chaos, Captain. Oh, oh boy. Reflectors up, sir. Lieutenant Uhura, open the hailing frequency. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Straight away. Uh. Mr. Spock, did you see what I think I just saw? Yes, everything just cut the black. However, the Klingon ship was not destroyed, nor was its disappearance the type that would have been affected if it were using its cloaking device. Oh, is that a... Is that a a deep cut, mentoring the cloaking device? Yeah. Back to the Enterprise incident. In the theory, it has something to do with the many ship disappearances in this area. A natural phenomenon. <laughs> <laughs> Nonetheless, let's have it on the record. Aye, sir. Signal in. Oh, shit. <laughs> Captain James T. Kirk, last known to be in command. Your information is correct. I like how it's the same animation of the previous Klingon, but it has a different voice, so it's a different different Klingon. Laser fire. <laughs> Save a little more than we can. Disappeared. Yeah. I don't know. Obviously why. it sounds like it's Sulu doing the voice. But we this time. are in the Delta Triangle. Yeah. Uh, Delta Triangle, Bermuda Triangle, okay. Mm. Enterprise out. Now, Mr. Sulu. <laughs> <laughs> I like his eyes when they get wide. <laughs> Interesting that they could animate the Enterprise disappearing, but then for the Klingon ship, they just cut to black the whole screen. I, I can't tell, sir. Vision won't focus. Oh, God. Oh, he's fine now. <laughs> yeah, I guess he got back to his seat okay. If we check closely, I believe we'll find many of those ships are the ones designated as lost in the Delta Triangle. An alternate universe? Okay, so it's literally a play on the Bermuda Triangle, yeah. but in space. And where is that Trekkie devil? I've been scanning for her, but there are so many ships here, it's hard to pick up a specific trace. So all those ships just filled with dead bodies? Yeah, I've seen that too. They all just... Also, why did everyone... Was everyone just getting adjusted? Is that why they got sick for like 30 seconds, but now they're fine? Or just Sulu? <laughs> I'm picking up life and energy readings from the cluster of ships ahead of us. They continued living and having babies and shit on the like, ship? Yeah, like how would you have resources? Scanners indicate the Enterprise shields are totally depleted, sir. Prepare to open fire on the Enterprise immediately. I like how they don't care at all that they've been transported here. They're <laughs> like, ah, should fire at the Enterprise. Ah, it's the Enterprise. Do they even know? That's our only purpose. <laughs> Report, sir. No response, sir. There's no indication of damage. All instruments register normal. Oh. Well, damn. <laughs> Spock just goes, All right, I'm in command. Solo fire again. Well, this isn't the first time he's disappeared for no reason. Exactly. Seems to happen quite often. Captain Kirk has been transported from the ship by an unknown power. Is that a Gorn in the background? It is. It's gotta be. Welcome to Elysia. Gentlemen, 
You now stand before the ruling council. Oh, dude, all these, sh sh all these ships created a... Uh... Like a government. Yeah. What the hell is that thing next to the Andorian? A red cat? Oh, we During saw that this green time, one before. Yeah. But we have made the best possible world here because we have found there is no escape from it. That was awesome. Yeah. If we find an answer, it will still take time. That's just what we haven't got. What's wrong, Scotty? It's our dilithium crystal, sir. Oh, no. You just got all that whole... A few episodes ago, I feel like you got a huge supply. <laughs> well, now they're deteriorating. Yeah. Damn. This is the best you could come up with, Mr. Spock? Yes, sir. <laughs> Have oh, you God. covered every possibility, every factor? Several times. I don't see you trying, sir. If that guy is a Vulcan, it might be the first Vulcan we've met whose name doesn't start with an S. Because we've met Spock, Serac, Sarek, Selick. Wow. Stan. That's a good point. All power has been diverted to the engine, sir. We're picking up speed. I mean, this whole idea, assuming that they get out of this and whatever, and everything's fine and they leave these people, like, this whole council is just going to exist in this pocket of space, never to be, you know, to talked about again. Similar to Giant Spock. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's always going to be in the back of my mind during everything. <laughs> Their attempt has given me an idea as to how we may be able to break through the time barrier. Mr. Spock is... Oh, there's Bones. Okay. Halfway through the episode. Yeah. What the hell is going on? <laughs> has anyone caught him up to speed? <laughs> it is not against our laws to try to escape. But they may kill themselves. You're the one that just said they have to try. <laughs> so long as they do not break our laws, we must not impede them. Even if they die. It is their choice. Maybe he's not just a Vulcan since he has that weird Superman cape. Maybe some, something else. Another variation. Romulan? I, I forgot what they look like. Just they're just Vulcans, basically, or they look like Vulcans. <laughs> yeah, we haven't seen any in a while, I think. Mister Spock, forgive me, Commander. I was overcome by the moment. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> How convincing! <laughs> Wasn't there an episode where he's like, "I am not an actor"? Did he say that? I'm, I'm trying. For some reason, I think that happened somewhere. Very good, Kaz. I will leave it to you to attend to the details of the Enterprise's destruction. So one answer of that Klingon is one we've seen in a previous episode. It's clearly posted as a restricted area. You knew you weren't supposed to be there. Gentlemen, I'm sure there's been a mistake. Where are you supposed to be working? <laughs> <laughs> what a weird sight. Getting out of here hinges on his computations. I'll talk to him, Bones. That's all I can do. <laughs> no, it's not moving. Yeah. You have to guess that on old TVs, because you know they used to be like round glass oh, PVs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It probably like, was like warped or like their, their mouth wasn't something strange, strange about the Klingons. Wasn't as big of a deal. Why is that unusual? They want to get out of here as much as we do. Had I not touched them, I would have agreed with you, Captain. Oh, you mind melded with them. Necessarily limited, and their minds were suspicious. You can just do like a, a vague, subtle mind meld where he doesn't you have know, to get all into it. Yeah. I mean, he said it was limited, but yeah, I guess he doesn't really need to try that hard. He just goes off vibes. He sensed an ick. Gave him an ick. <laughs> I want all security teams on duty around the clock. Watch every Klingon who sets foot aboard this ship. His arm looked pretty toned there. Oh, yeah, look at that. Excellent. Kali, you know what to do. Tonight, they enter. Yeah, core. And all their names start with K. True. <laughs> Beautifully done. Okay. Is she supposed to be the Orion slave girl, like from the Menagerie? I said Orion, so Orion, so Orion. same species, yeah. Yeah, Menagerie. We believe it can be done. Then I shall not interfere with your dream, Captain. Get away from her, human. This is my woman. <laughs> <laughs> Ask her to dance. She didn't have to say yes. <laughs> oh, God. Ship captains and these two... We've come to the council chamber now to face charges. <laughs> Just over that? I mean, the violence. one guy shot at him. I mean, but what? come on. I did it on purpose to create a distraction, but still violence for a century. I mean, uh, punishment for a century. Yeah. I propose we freeze the Clothos and its crew for a star century. May I speak? You may. <laughs> you would take these renegades with you? We need them. Very well. I release Captain Cord into your custody. No. Oh. That was easy. You will be needing it. All right. Just got to argue your point. The Klingons have hidden an explosive aboard 
And the prize. Yeah, well, whoever made that choice, uh, that voice is extremely annoying. <laughs> yeah, who do you think is voicing that one? Is that a Hura or a... I was going to say, it sounds like a Hura. There it is, Chuck. Eat it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this thing. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, hey, they did it. That explosive they left, they left behind just destroys the whole universe. And <laughs> oh, <there>. damn. <laughs> And picking up a radio transmission Captain Cor intended for his home base. He took full credit for our escape from Elysia. Did you notice that Eric's was like a nun on that? Yeah, because yeah. they couldn't change his facial expression. <laughs> <laughs> He'd just be smiling the whole time. Oh no, Eric's, we're in another universe. <laughs> Isn't this horrible? Oh, that's it, it's over. It ended. So, so like, were the Klingons disturbed when they didn't blow up? I guess they didn't care. That we much. ran out of time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it said at the end there that they like took credit or whatever, but who cares? I like that episode. I think that uh, it was like on the cusp of being really great, but it didn't quite get there for me. Uh, dragged a little bit at the second half, but I really, my favorite part is I really love that whole community or what would you call them, like a board or whatever. That council. Yeah, yeah the council, yeah, of all the different representatives of the different races. I mean, for a show from the 70s, man, they're really nailing the fan service here. Like so yeah. many callbacks. <laughs> Yeah, we had the Gorn in there, and like a couple different Vulcans, and uh, that that one blue species was there, and that green one from the other episode. And uh, really quick, one thing I've noticed is like how many so many species or episodes or people like just accept their fate, and it always takes the Enterprise to come along and fix it. Yeah. And uh, th this is one of those few occasions where I wish we had more time <laughs> to uh, explore this because that that was the most fascinating part, and I wanted to see what happens. Okay, like they found out that they could leave. So are they going to try to leave? Are they going to try to go home? Are they just yeah. accepted their life there? Because, you know, they've made it what it is and they're happy. But, uh, damn, I, I, I want more from this one. Yeah, it is definitely interesting because it's like, that would be a uh, interesting moral kind of like decision of, okay, we can see we can leave now. So should we try or should we accept our life here? But that has nothing to do with our crew that we're following, so yeah. <laughs> you just got a, got a uh, headcanon about it, it I seemed, guess. Yeah, I mean, it seemed like it was more of like a minor inconvenience to our guys, you know what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. and they weren't even that strict. It's like, oh, we're not even going to try to stop you from trying to leave, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, they can try if they want to. But uh, one fascinating part I liked was just seeing both sides, like the Enterprise ship and the Klingon ship, like both like crews like trying to figure out how to leave, and like just having the same conversation in two different groups was kind of cool. Like how the Klingons dealt with it versus how the Enterprise dealt with it. Yeah. And, uh, and also one of like the people on the council was a Klingon, I noticed. So I thought that, that there should have been like some conversation there. Like, what, you, oh, you're a Klingon? Oh, you know, it's something, I don't know. Yeah, that'd be neat. Of course they just drew in the rest of them. Like, oh, I think what, only three of them ended up actually talking at all. Yeah. Would have been really neat to see the Gorn say something, but uh, obviously they just drew the rest of them in, you know, didn't hire anybody, didn't plan to do anything with them. Uh, if I could make one improvement to the episode, I would get rid of that whole plot line of destroying the Enterprise. Um, because they set up that those two other ships were out there before they went into the this black hole thing. Mm -hmm. So you could have had it been like, oh, well, right when we get back out, you know, we'll attack the Enterprise or whatever. This explosive thing, I would because it ends up being nothing. Like, they just get rid of it. Uh, I would rather have spent that time with this council and more the kind of moral decisions of it. But at the end of the day, whatever. It's not that big of a deal. I enjoyed the episode, uh, but it, it, with a few little changes, it could have been like one of the best ones. I still think overall it was one of the better ones, uh, just from what we got to see and the idea of it. And I was worried when they introduced what it was. I'm like, oh, it's just the Bermuda Triangle, and they're gonna like harp on this. But no, then they introduced that whole council. It, it added a whole new element. So. Yeah, made it very interesting. How about the uh, <laughs> the uh, psychic lady? Huh? Wasn't wasn't that good? I like the idea of like a psychic character, but the voice was just like, whoever made that decision for Michelle Nichols to talk like that is like, not a good choice. Just, it just made it grating anytime she talked. Yeah, I just thought it was weird. Like she's only there for like the very end. Just it's like, oh, there's a explosive in there. Oh, thanks. And then like, you know, that that's it. It's like, eh. Yeah, at least I respect that it's like they set her up so yeah, you know what she can yeah. do and then it pays off in the end. Yeah, true. Just and like it gave the council something to do. True, but I don't know. I like seeing this them uh deal with things very adult-like and being very accepting I'm like okay yeah you can try that's fine or even oh 
violence, blah, blah, blah. And then Kirk just explains his point and like just takes away the punishment. Like, okay, that part was good. Yeah, the show has done a really good job with the writing of like setting up a very basic premise, but then like surprising me throughout the episode and not getting stale. Like there's only been a couple times where we figure out what the episode is and then it just kind of rides it out. Most of the time it, it keeps adding one or two new elements to kind of keep the pacing up. So mm -hmm. it did that here as well. So yeah, overall liked it. Um, what do you guys think of this one? Uh, I think this is our, I mean, the Klingons, Klingons have been in this show already, but this was the first where they were like super heavily focused outside of the triples episode. So, oh, I did want to look up who Kor was real quick. Oh, it was this guy. Oh, okay. From, so he was from the very first uh, Klingon episode, I think. Aaron wow. and Mercy, yeah. And that's John Calicos from Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> oh, my, oh my god! I don't know if he voiced him, but... Uh, that's crazy. I knew he looked familiar. Wow, okay. So, yeah, that's interesting. But alright, what did you guys think of this episode? Let us know, and if it's your first time here, make sure to subscribe. Catch all of our reactions to every piece of Star Trek media and become part of the target audience. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much. That's it. We're done.